first thing out of the way here, check the description for details. I'll put all the details in the description. I get a lot of comments a lot of times from people that are asking questions that are all answered in the description. So check out the description. Today I'm doing a transmission service on a 2020 Honda Odyssey. This has the 10 speed automatic, so that's what this video is gonna be about. I've laid out a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna show you what tools I have and uh, we'll go through the whole procedure here, but I wanted to point out a couple things before we even get started here. So uh, this takes five quarts of fluid. It actually is probably gonna be about four and a half, but you get five and then any excess gets drained out in the fill level setting procedure. But I wanna talk about transmission fluid because I do a lot of transmission service videos. I service a lot of transmissions and inevitably somebody posts some comment about how I'm gonna ruin a transmission because I didn't run Honda fluid or Toyota fluid or whatever fluid. You put whatever brand on it you want. So I wanna talk about the two things, the two factors that make transmission fluid what it is. Uh, one of them is who makes it, the manufacturer, what brand it is, and uh, which actually what brand it is and the manufacturer are two different things because I, I haven't looked into it, but my guess is that Honda doesn't actually refine oil and make this transmission fluid. Um, and my guess is that Valvoline does actually make that transmission fluid, but either way, um, the brand is one thing and then the type is another. Uh, there's no specification or requirement for brand, but there are requirements for type. So uh, should you run a different type of transmission fluid in your vehicle? Never, absolutely not. Should you run a different brand? There's no reason not to. I also wouldn't fault you for feeling like you wanted to run the OE brand. So in this case, it would be Honda or in the case of a Toyota, it would be Toyota. That's just fine, I've got no problem with that at all, but there's nothing wrong with running a different brand of transmission fluid as long as it's the right type. So this 10-speed automatic in the Honda requires ATF type 2.0. If this were a nine-speed uh, from, I've got some notes here because it's kind of complicated. In 2018 and 2019, this video covers all 10-speed Honda Odysseys. In 2018 and 2019, the LX, EX, and EXL had a nine-speed, which requires type 3.1. This is not that type. So even though it's Honda, this is the wrong fluid. Interestingly, this Valvoline Max Life ATF actually is the right type for the nine speed. If you look on the back, I'm not gonna zoom in here, but if you look on the back, it calls out right on the bottle that it meets or exceeds the Honda type 3.1, also 3.0 requirements. So if this is a nine speed, that Valvoline would be the right fluid because it meets 3.1. This is a 10 speed, so we need, which I was not able to find in any other manufacturer other than Honda. So we've got it right here, it's about 70 bucks for the five quarts, so not a big deal. So that's my, my little bit on type versus brand. And uh, so of course this is gonna be set aside because we're not gonna be using that today. On to the tools. I'm gonna be doing this of course on my lift here in the background. So it's gonna be easiest for me to do everything from down below. So I'm gonna be using this little pump here. So link in description for this pump. Um, I'll put a link in the description for the torque wrench. I probably won't put links for like all the specific little tools because that's kind of overkill in my opinion. But I will point out that I've got a little driver in the back with a 10 millimeter socket on it. The driver just speeds things up a little bit. I've got a 3 ace torque wrench right here, a digital torque wrench. It'll beep at me when I hit the setting. And then I've got a 3 ace ratchet, just a standard ratchet. And then I've got 3 ace sockets. I've got a 17 millimeter for the fill plug and a 12 millimeter for the level set drain. I also wanna note that today I'm gonna to be following the Honda service manual procedure on this. So everything I cover is what Honda is specifying. One tool I did not mention is my little body panel clip remover. Uh, not required, you can use a small flathead screwdriver, but it does make it a little handier pulling these clips out. So that's what we're gonna be using here. We've got another clip right here. Now we've got a couple 10 mils and a Phillips. Another tool I didn't get on the list. Grab that Phillips bit. 
One thing I love is when manufacturers are consistent and they have one fastener for one part. This is not that. All right, we can pull that right out. So if we go right up in here, we have a little bit tough to see at the moment, but we've got a 12 millimeter. There's our level set drain. And then up above it, we've got a 17 millimeter plug. So both of those need to come out and we're gonna pull those out before we drain the fluid out. The fluid is gonna get drained right out of the drain plug there. So the one thing I'm gonna do here is we've got a bracket holding a wire harness to an oxygen sensor and there's a, a 10 mil bolt holding that in. So I'm gonna take that bolt out and we're gonna swing that out of the way. So we're just gonna sneak a wrench right up here, crack it loose and then see if I can do it by hand here. And there it is. So now we've got a little bit of wiggle room so we can push that out of the way pretty comfortably here. And now my lighting's not great, but up in there we've got our 17 mil and our 12 mil. So I've put the socket up on that fill plug so that you can kind of see where it's at since it's recessed a little bit. Can't get a real good camera shot of it. So there's the socket on there. I'll probably block the view getting in here to loosen it up, but we'll try and get the ratchet clocked right. Crack it loose, and usually these only require cracking it loose and then they'll come right out. So don't need to ratchet it the whole way and that's the case here so there it is we got that out of the way and we've got our crush washer which stuck to the transmission housing we're not going to remove it but we're going to make sure that we can crack free the fill level drain and that one also cracks free pretty easily now we're gonna move on to the drain. So I've got my drain pan under here and we're just gonna grab the 3 8 ratchet. We'll actually move that out of the way to get good access. Give it a good yank, break it free and it should come out by hand. We'll get the drain plug back in here. We'll loosen it up a bit and it's probably gonna run out pretty fast. This is transmission fluid's usually pretty thin. We'll also try and take a peek at it, and this does not look too bad. This vehicle does not have a ton of miles on it, but uh, we're, we're definitely doing preventative maintenance in this case. And this is never a bad thing to see. You could argue that maybe it's not worth doing, but I would argue, and I just caught that. I didn't have that pan any lower than I could have. Um, I'd argue that this is exactly the time you want to be doing this. You don't want to wait until it is nasty, dark fluid. So I'm gonna wipe off the uh, drain plug here so there's a magnet on it. And you can see, we'll see if I can get a close shot, but there's definitely some buildup on it. Not a scary amount, but there again, that's why we're doing this. So now seems like a great time to talk about crush washers. This one is actually kind of stuck on the plug a little bit here, and that's all right. I've had mixed results both ways. I have had new crush washers that leaked. I've reused crush washers that leaked, although honestly what's uh, failed me the least is reusing crush washers. So I usually have some on hand, and uh, it's, you know, sometimes I'll replace them if they have any visual issues with them that look like they're gonna have a ceiling problem. But in this case, I'm gonna reuse this one because it looks great and it's already still sealed to the plug. So we're just gonna put this in and we're gonna torque it back down once it's done draining. So now seems like a good time to talk about torque specs since we're about to reinstall the drain plug here. So the drain plug itself, the torque spec for tightening it back down again is 36 
foot-pounds, which is 49 Newton meters. The fill plug is going to be 34 foot-pounds, which is 44 Newton meters. And the uh, level check plug is going to be 15 foot-pounds, which is 20 Newton meters. And again, all of this, along with everything else, will be listed in the description if you need a quick reference. So we're down to a dribble, and since the fluid really looks nice and clean, I'm not worried about getting every last drop out, so we're gonna reinstall the drain plug. We've got our torque wrench set to 36 foot-pounds, and we're gonna torque down the drain plug. Pro tip, follow the directions. Shake well before use. Make sure you shake these up, then you can start pumping them in. So I'm gonna feed the output end of my pump hose up into this hole here. Kind of loop it around so it kind of jams in there a little bit. And then I'm just gonna start pumping transmission fluid in out of these quarts. The key is to go slow here because you can see a few drips coming down. Whenever I try and go a little faster, it starts to overflow a little bit. So I'm just kind of taking my time here. We're gonna put the fill plug back in now. We're done filling, 34 foot pounds. So we've drained out the old fluid, we've put five quarts of fresh fluid in it, we've torqued down the drain plug, we've torqued down the fill plug. Now, per the service manual, we need to start this thing up. We're gonna shift through the gears. We're gonna shift into reverse. And then we're gonna shift into drive. We're going to put it into S and we're manually going to shift up to two. I don't know exactly if that matters, but we're going to do all the shifting we can back to one, back to reverse, back to park. And now we're going to let this idle until it comes up to operating temperature. And the service manual says the cooling fans need to come on twice. So they're gonna cycle on once and then they're gonna cycle on twice. And then we can pull out that level set plug and drain out the excess fluid. It's pretty quiet, but you can hear the cooling fans are on and they're on for the second time. So we're gonna shut this off. So you can see where our temp gauge is at. And then you can also see that it says 53,000 miles on it. So. Uh, first service on the transmission at 53,000 miles looks great. I would probably recommend to this guy to continue every 50,000 miles. We're gonna shut it off. We're gonna come back under here now with it turned off and we're going to remove, which I already cracked it loose so you can see it's coming right out. We're gonna take out this 12 millimeter bolt and this is gonna set the level. So I'm gonna be careful here because the fluid's now going to be well, at least warm, if not hot, but we're gonna let all the excess drain out. And that is not a particularly fast stream, so it looks like we were pretty much dead on with the quantity. Um, I'm actually questioning whether or not I thought we were gonna get more like a half a quart out, and it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. So we're gonna let it drain just a little bit here. But uh, keep in mind now, if you think about anything old school with a dipstick, there was a range on the dipstick. There was an acceptable range. And so depending on a few factors, and usually they'd even account for temperature on the dipstick. They may have different spots for if you're checking when it's hot and cold, but either way, there's always a range. So we do not have to be exact here. We are not gonna be off by half an ounce and screw up this transmission. If we're within a range, we're gonna be good to go because we're following the procedure by the Honda service manual. 
So we'll let it run just a little bit longer here, but once it gets just a little bit more of a dribble, then we're gonna put the plug back in and call it good. So it's slowed down a little bit more. We're kind of getting to droplets now towards the bottom. It's a little solid stream up at top and then droplets at the bottom. That is gonna be close enough for us. So we're gonna, we're gonna get this plug back in here. And the torque spec for this plug, the level check, is 15 foot-pounds. So we got 15 foot-pounds on the torque wrench. And there we go, 15 foot-pounds. So here's the cover. Here's how it goes with the notch up towards the center and front. Tuck it in here. So the last thing to do is get this bracket back in place here. We'll tighten down the bolt by hand. Slug it down with the ratchet. And we're ready to go. All right, the cover's on, the service is done. We're gonna drop this thing down and it's ready to go down the road. Thanks for watching.